Welcome back to my office and in today's video I am cleaning up some aphids on my pings. How'd they get there? Yeah so sometimes when you buy plants from just places and you have an office and you can't quarantine them in a certain like location. Yep I brought in uh, some aphids on that came in from one of my plants. I wanna say it was like this Brazil that I got at a nursery, but then I've seen them on some of my other plants. There are only like a, a few of them, but I think one of uh, the aphids hopped on to kind of like my pings. Luckily, it only got like one of them really good and I had to get rid of them. It was a pirouette uh, ping and it really demolished it. But then it also snuck onto all of my propagation trays. Yeah, I was trying to control it, but they kind of, aphids are, they kind of spread a little bit. So I had a little kind of like a come to Jesus moment where I was like, do I set these all on fire or do I actually treat them? And of course I didn't go with the previous. Definitely don't want to set all my pings on fire because yeah, I do hate bugs. Luckily at the same time, uh, during, during this, in my Facebook groups, I think it was the carnivorous plant group or the pinguicula plantation, someone also had aphids all over their uh, droceras and it was a lot. Reading through the comments, you know, some use some different uh, kind of like chemicals. Maybe chemicals isn't like the right word because you know, like neem or some kind of like Captain Jack's or, you know, they're all natural but I was, I'm just a little too uh, nervous to use that on my pings. So other suggestions was, let's just submerge them for 24 to 48 hours. And that's what I've done. Check this out. Here is a small little container. So I, I wanted to test this out first, like with a small batch. This is my second one. I've tested it out with a batch and I've just kind of, I needed to kind of keep the pings underwater because they do float up to the top and I wanted to make sure I get all, a lot of coverage. And then hopefully the I can see actually some of the aphids just kind of like are drowning. But what I've noticed is that they, as in the aphids, they do still they still stick to the leaves a little bit. So I do have to look at each and one each and every one of them. I have this little tool right here that I use. I think I got this like in the, the beauty supply section because I wanted something really small, rounded edge. I think these are actually more used for uh, popping your zits, but for me, I use this to actually pick off uh, the aphids off of these pings. So with that, I'm actually on a uh, makeshift uh, tripod here because as you can see my actual, my real tripod, I'm actually using it for a time-lapse on my uh, Monstera there. I got two new leaves coming in and I was preparing this video and I was like, oh, I don't have my tripod. so. Let's do a little makeshift here. Let's see if it'll kind of come out all right. We'll see how things go, okay? So with that, let me just get started on cleaning up my pings. What I really hope to do, go one by one, kind of pick one. Most of my uh, propagations are Maranthuses, and I do have a lot of Gigantias. So here, here's my three trays of Academa. I still can't pronounce that right, Turfus, um, inorganic material right here. So I'm putting my uh, ping propagations on top of these rocks because I like to, uh, you know, when I'm done and I'm either ready getting to sell it or give it to somebody else, bare root, it really makes uh, it easy. So what I did was I took this out, I boiled some water and uh, outside my backyard, I really just poured all the boiling water just on top of the rocks just to hopefully kill anything extra that might be kind of hiding inside. Because I want to make sure I do a thorough job because if I don't boil this, aphids probably, with any other pest, man, they live forever. Man, these guys are like prehistoric, man. They'll just live. So I wanted to make sure I kill as much as possible. So that's my little trays. I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to drown my pings. I definitely wasn't kidding. Let me try to tilt this down here a little bit. So check that out. So a lot, all these pings, so I think this is the Gigantias because it's a lot less. These are all my Maranthuses. They're in my little propagation box I just turned into a, 
a nice little uh, submerge them. And I have a little, uh, what are those little sifters? No, I forget what these little, uh, oh my God, I'm just blinking right now. But I have these in here, so basically, let us start cleaning up my pings. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. All right, and there she has it that I've completed cleaning all of these pings that I've basically drowned uh, the aphids. Now, surprisingly, when I was cleaning these that I did notice that there were only like a few aphids on the pings, which was great. I mean, I didn't have like a big infestation, not like, you know, there weren't like, you know, five to 10 per ping, but it was enough that, I mean, I, I think it was maybe like a couple of them maybe had like, you know, about five on them. I, I couldn't tell if they were like babies or like eggs that I have no idea how the aphids uh, reproduce, but I thought it did a, a pretty decent job uh, with this first try. So with that, uh, this big old bash, let me just kind of show you right here. That's about, about like 60 plus uh, pings. So I had to go one by one through uh, each of them. And I mean, it worked out uh, pretty good. I'm actually pretty excited. Now, what I'll try to show you is uh, if there's any like what are, what does the aphids actually look like like in the water so maybe i'll try to get like a clip of that uh, i have my little container uh my container that's just right over there and then there's my little water tub if i'm able to get uh some video of it i will uh put it in this clip but if not uh, maybe i'll try to get some like still images uh before that what i've also done was i did take a, a few videos before about you know just seeing how big the the aphids look i tried to like zoom in like on the leaves so hopefully you should be able to kind of like see them like moving around uh on the pings now when you're talking like you know pings you're like oh well you got carnivorous plants shouldn't the carnivorous plants like eat the eat the aphids I'm probably sure that they are, but they seem a little bit smarter than like the fungus gnats. The fungus gnats just kind of get stuck and they just get eaten. They just don't, all they do is like fly away. But these aphids, man, they just crawl and man, they just infest. So maybe I'll also take a look uh, to see why are aphids so like resistant to death. <laughs> I don't know if that's like the right thing to say, but they, they really feel like they're just resistant to death. And they just like multiply. So let's just see how um, these pings turn out. This is not the end. So it's not just like one clean and you're done. It's all about now monitoring. I think that I will, should I spray these guys with some like neem oil or something or Captain Jack? I probably won't. I like to kind of keep it uh, free of any kind of like spray as best as possible. So let's just kind of see uh, how that turns out. Now we have an update on how my pings are doing since I've drowned uh, what I thought were the aphids uh, for about 24 hours. So how are my pings doing? Well, let's take a look. Here are the four trays that I put all my pings back into. 
So this is about like a week and a half after I've drowned uh, the aphids and what I thought, I thought I drowned 95% of them because, you know, I've been monitoring these about every day, but sure enough, these pesky little bugs, apparently some can hold their breath longer than 24 hours. I'm just calling it that because when I take a look at my pings, there's still some aphids on them. Not like a whole bunch, very uh, minimal, but there's still enough. But then let's take a look at how did uh, drowning my pings do. So as you can see, and I'm just gonna grab a little pointer here. So like this one, totally disintegrated. You can see some of the leaves on some of like the smaller ones, and I'll just kind of like zoom in a little bit. They're starting to disintegrate or kind of like die off. And I think that's okay. I am going to just kind of like wait it out as you can tell like that one right there. Where's my little pointer? See, both the leaves are kind of disintegrating. These are the gigantias, like that leaf right there. That one has disintegrated pretty well. This one's doing okay. It's doing okay, but then as I'm doing it, you can see right at the tip, right there, there's another little aphid. So I gotta get that sucker. There's some baby ones. So, I mean, they're still doing fine, but as you can tell, there's some that just really are struggling, right? Like the, the tips of this is kind of like burnt. Got to wait for these to kind of like to now grow out. As I'm going to come back over here to the right, these are where my moranthuses are, is like the, the bigger ones. They're holding up all right. You can tell, you see some, some leaves starting to disintegrate. But that's okay because, you know, new leaves, as you can tell, like right there, new leaves will continually pop out. But now that you see some leaves, a little extra curly. So the question to myself is, would I do this again? Would I drown my pings after this experiment? Uh, if I was to get more pest or something like that? Um, I think my answer would be no. I would not drown my pings again. Uh, the reason being, just looking at some of the leaves and how they're disintegrating, I it's going to take a little bit longer for it to come back. So I'm going to have to maybe do that Q-tip method or get other little scrapers or just one by one scrape off all the, the pings, continually uh, monitor them, and get them all kind of like cleaned up. So hopefully that just gives you a, a glimpse into how I've cleaned up my pings. Would you do it yourself after my experience? Uh, maybe, maybe you'll have better luck. I mean, it all depends. I think, you know, my my water here, uh, where I live here in the, I live in California, the Bay Area, uh, right near uh, Oakland, but my water's pretty good. It's not like, I think it's hard water, but it's not, uh, I know other counties around me, um, their water is not the, the best. I do run it through a zero filter, but however, when I drown my pings, I just use my normal like filtered water in the backyard. And I know that that TDS, uh, the meter is about like less than 50. Um, so it's not like, you know, that, that much. But I think for the pings being underwater for that long, for that 24 hours, I did notice that a lot of the leaves, they started to be uh, a lot translucent. And when you look at the healthy leaves, you'll see the little sticky, but, you know, it's kind of like the, the sticky pad, uh, like the sticky venom where the bugs kind of like stick on. That'll start to come back when you know that you see a little bit more stickiness, kind of like, you know, bright little miniature dots look like little, yeah, just little shiny little dots all over like the leaves. That's kind of like the healthy leaves. And that will definitely uh, give you an indicator that you know that that pink's uh, coming back. So with that, I appreciate you checking out this video and I'll give a little plug to myself right here. So if you like pings like I do, I've really gotten a lot into pings. I've kind of started to do a little like 
design here. So I have my own t-shirt line that I am kind of producing here, slowly but surely. Uh, I do like my pings. Maybe I'll turn it into some art because look, I got all this like white space in my office. I got to fill that sucker. I mean, it's, i am been in my office now for really, what is it? Uh, September, almost October now. So like October, 2021, I've been in my office literally for like two plus years just working here. So yeah, it does get a little like mundane sometime, but you got to kind of like fill it in with some, some creativity. I mean, I can only enjoy my plants so much, create so much, but at the same time, I'm stuck in here for a while. So I would appreciate it if you uh, hit that like button. Definitely helps with that YouTube uh, algorithm. I definitely appreciate for those of you who, who have subscribed to my channel. I can see that it's slowly growing. I'm almost to about 300 subscribers. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the comments that you put out there. Uh, and maybe just kind of, maybe you can give me some suggestions about uh, what else could I do to kind of help clean up my pings. So with that, remember, hit smash that like button and until the next time. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great night. All right, bye.